Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your host, Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be chatting about the world of Hero Clicks and a couple of fun teams that Ian and myself have been building. This is episode 536. Hatty Hatty, let's get rowdy. Do you really want to do you really want to click set? Leadership. Roll a six, make a move extreme. Token on. Take it out. From your team, I go straight to your start. Hypersonic speed. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. You can use code DIAL5, D I A L 5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you go to shop.wizkids.com, you can use code dial H10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order. Not usable with like pre orders and certain promotions, but it is something you can do. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Ian Eggleston. What's going on, Ian? Oh, it's going. It's going, baby. It's going. It's going. Mm-hmm. Tell, us, uh, tell us about what made you happy this last week, my man. Oh, boy. Some grown up stuff, I guess, in a way. Grown up stuff. Get yeah. A load of this. Get a load of this guy. Well, you know, I'd been wearing the same like blazers and dress shirts mm. for like. I don't know, like 10 months at this point, just cycling in the same like five outfits. I was like, you know what? Got to hit them with something new. So I spent way too much money on like new pants, blazers, dress shirts, some new shoes, like just so much, so much to up the work attire. And I was trying to justify it. And then I realized I kind of just like wearing clothes like this. So I'm going to fit them into some like, you know, going outfits, some regular kind of like upper casual style but yeah i just needed some new clothes so got a ton of new clothes and working towards another thing that involves clothing that we can't talk about yet oh <laughs> yes oh man but it yeah, did I can't wait involve that. tennis rackets <laughs> there are tennis rackets That's... involved in this one so i love no. how that kind of really doesn't help narrow it down at all oh that's, not at all that's like the best part <laughs> but it's so specific yeah, it's at the so, same time oh, it's and so, so good. yeah i mean we're going into uncharted waters with that and that is uh it's just not something i thought i'd do <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited about I'm, it i'm looking forward I'm to really it excited be about fun. It. but yeah there's a lot down the barrel i've got some concerts to go to this month i'm gonna go back home to visit my buddy who's leaving for china for like a year oh wow which is wild and then, yeah, you know, just going back to visit the family and then a few conventions, not Hero Clicks related to attend. So, yeah, October is, didn't really plan for any of this, but it's looking like it's going to be fun. So, yeah, no, it's a, it's a good week. How nice. about yourself? Right on. I had a great time. I went up to Supercon this past weekend in Sioux Falls. I had an absolute blast. There were a few celebrities that I was excited to meet. I've been to Supercon, I think, yeah, every year since it started back in 2015. And these last couple of years, I've had to go as like a cosplay judge. So this year, I just got to go as an attendee, which is really fun. Um, I still had, you know, some people gave me their comp badges, which is super nice of them. Uh, But the biggest guest that I needed to go or like wanted to go meet was they had Mark Wade and they had uh, Dana DeLorenzo. So first one I got to meet, like do the whole picture autograph thing with was Dana DeLorenzo. She plays Kelly Maxwell in the Ash versus Evil Dead TV show. So the Evil Dead show. No idea who this is. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't dove into the show yet, but she's a super fun character, you know, that gets introduced to the Evil Dead universe. Out of, like, the three main characters, it'd be, like, her, Ash, and Pablo. So she's one of the main characters in the show, and she was just a super fun, super sweet person. It was kind of crazy, because, like, so, you know, kind of backstory. The show came out back in, like, 2015, so, you know, I'm, like, 16, 17 years old when the show is coming out. And, uh, like, I finally see her, you know, 25-year-old grown no man. And I, it kind of a little, honestly, like, a little no bit. Boy. I was, like so nervous and i was like dressed as ash and she's like wow that's so cool and she was just so nice she's like super positive and it was great so we got a you know good chat at like the photo took a fun photo um at like that little thing then i went i had her sign my evil dead the game like steel book case which is really cool evil game or evil Evil, dead the show the game the game (laughs) kind of yeah (laughs) and so and she was like is it true that they just like kind of stopped caring about the game and i'm like Yeah, you know, it really was a beautiful game. Like, it had great graphics, and, like, your character was really fun to play. You had a cool ability. She, like, hated my ability. All it did was let me dodge. And I'm like, I know it doesn't sound fun, but that's actually so strong. Like, you were actually, Mm -hmm. like, one of the more strong characters as far as that. You're meta, girl. She... She wasn't (laughs) meta. I wouldn't say... Was she the best hunter? No, she wasn't, like, meta-meta, but she... 
She was up there. You're fringe. She girl. was she was fringe. Yeah, I, I would say <laughs> that. she was at least fringe. And it was so fun hearing her kind of like rip into the game a little bit because you know I'm like as a fan I'm like man I, I would never say opinions. this to you. So I'm happy you're saying it to me because I agree. I think they handled like the way like it got released and then they instantly stopped support. Like that's not good for any game. And so it was pretty cool. She had some boomer takes. I won't lie. She was like, and I bought the game and me and my brother both sat down on the couch and I gave him a controller and he was like, we can't play together. I'm like, what do you mean we can't play together? Honestly, there's though, no split that, screen. That's a bigger topic of just like, it does suck that couch co-op is largely dead. I hate that. Like, I really do Halo? hate that. You can't do split yeah. screen on Halo. Excuse me. Yeah. That sucks. I can't remember who was talking to me about that, but they're like, yeah, I got it for my son and I to play, and we sat down, and we couldn't. Yep. That's like... It, does, it really does suck. Like, yeah, to like, get into sort of a larger topic, but like, yeah, like straight up, I do hate straight that we up, can't why? have like, couch we co-op had it on before. so many games. Yeah. Everything's too so, online now. You got to be a very too, online guy. Way too online. Way too online. Super internet man these days to enjoy yourself with your friends. <laughs> Sadly, mm-hmm. Mark Wade was another like blast. Like Mark Ray- Wade wrote one of my favorite Captain America runs, the post Secret Empire run, where Cap is more down home, going like to you know kind of like small town America, tackling just much more down to earth like root causes like and fixing everything. Cars and yeah, I mean actually getting cats out of trees, kind of actually like <laughs> fixing cars, and then like there would always be usually a super villain or some like rocks on thing my going cats on in this tree, town. Captain America, should I throw my shield at it? He, no, 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 don't do that. He kind of did stuff like that though, actually. <laughs> <laughs> abused animals yeah no 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 no, no. <laughs> like like save like did very small towny yeah, simple yeah. you, you ran know. for mayor yeah no lost <laughs> no no no, mayor, no, no um and it was fun talking with like mark wade about that although he didn't seem as enthused about it as i was hoping i will say mark wade he didn't rub me the wrong way i still really respect him as a creator but you know he did say in his little interview like thing panel where someone's like what's the best you know work you've ever done he's like oh yeah fantastic four and i'm just like as an f4 hater i'm just like yeah whatever mark wade and then i asked him like my question about like captain america and he's like honestly just because the way disney is i would never write for captain america again i'm like oh mark wade don't say that so yeah, Mark Wade cut me deep a few Dang. times, but, he, I, well, you know, but he's wrote position, he's position. wrote two really good Captain America runs. So I'll stand by. I love his I love his work. He still did a great job, and he enjoyed like the issues I had him sign. So I was like, I had oh, him do cool. the very first issue of his run, issue seven hundred, and then just my favorite cover, which is just like at least he like remembered it. Yeah. Oh man. Well, there's it, probably that would be a hand. wild. Well, you know, like we probably have some projects that people enjoyed where it was like, that was just not fun to make or, you know, that actually, that actually is really so true. I know that this is on a much larger scale. I'm not trying to draw a comparison to like a real artist, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like where it's like, Oh, I really appreciate X, Y, or Z. It's like, you did. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, so honestly, I guess form. we have had some moments where it's like, there's been a few of those. Oh, that's your favorite video. Why? Yeah. I guess. Like, you know, you want more of this really? Honestly. So sometimes, okay, you, know, you know what? Sure. Let yeah. us know what you like guys. Sometimes it, it genuinely does surprise us. So that is very true. That <laughs> and that's not true. to, you know, again, not to pivot it into us, but you know, I think I've no, definitely once you kind of re- Once you kind of relate it that way. Yeah. yeah. I kind of see what you mean. You know, like a band, it's like, Oh, my favorite song is your most popular song. It's like, Oh, cool. Shocker. Dude. Crazy. Yeah. Or, you know, what, you know, like, so if people have like a respect, I guess, for their more deep cut library, that's always something I it is cool. appreciate more because I think they appreciate it too. So, oh, you know, at least he like recognized it, right? Very true. Very so, true. But yeah, yeah. Supercon was a blast. I was Ash one day and that was really about it. Kind of did a lazy nothing cosplay on Sunday, just kind of hung out. And I did get to play a really fun team at Rainbow. I got to go to the Rainbow Hero Clicks venue on Friday nights, which is, of course, Lucas Van Allen's. Uh, you know, dojo. Isaac Denke, the dojo, yeah, the mm-hmm. dojo, stomping grounds, and the it's just great to play with made. You. Just great to play with those guys. They have great energy. They have a great time. You know, all like the younger kids for when I was there a few years ago and was there for a few years. Like all those kids are like fourteen, fifteen, are all in college now, so it's crazy. Yeah. And it's like, man, what the heck? But they're still playing Hero Clicks, which rocks. So it was super fun just hanging out with those guys again, playing some clicks, and it even ended up being three hundred modern too. It was I was in their house playing their kind of game, so I was mm-hmm. like, oh dang. But Saddling it was up. a ton of fun. Let's go ahead and jump into some quick Heroclix news. Black Panther, Ian, is on the prowl. Wow. It's Well, it's pseudo on the prowl. We have like a picture from Scott Porter, so it's coming up. Mm-hmm. A little, little Scotty P, Black Panther unboxing. Play at home's a brick. 
Very, and then very fun. We have an official statement from WizKids about a release update. I'll just read it verbatim. Marvel Hero Clicks Black Panther officially releases on October 30th, 2024. Due to the shift in date, we recommend that local stores consolidate their pre-releases and release day events. You can take a look at the information on formats below, and they have a link to the Black Panther pre-release. So, pretty cool. We have an official release date. You know, kind of got pushed, whatever. But That's Black okay. Panther's the 30th. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still in dude, Masters of I'm Time. I'm so high on Masters of Time. Run in there. I really don't mind Black Panther coming out a little later than mm-hmm. like expected because, yeah, I'm so high on Masters and of Time like, right now. I mean, with just what's down the barrel, it's like totally fine. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm excited for this set in the same way I'm excited for anything new in Hero Clicks. But it's like, it's really okay that the date was pushed back. I think. Anyone throwing a fuss about that? It's like Masters of Time wasn't good enough for you. You can't. You can't just enjoy this. You know. Yeah. So I'm still very much in the pool of like. I mean, it's just nice when there's no basis of oh, this is the best thing to play. So you're just experimenting more. I think people are more open to things that can be good right now. Like there's just a healthier discussion of what's good in the game, and I I just enjoy that. So honestly, in a way, it's kind of nice to have a a dull point in like no tournaments because nobody's just latching on to, oh, you just have to play this. Very true. So the conversation has shifted a bit. I know people are pretty excited for Black Panther too. I've definitely seen a lot of drumming, especially in the legacy card department. There's There's been a a lot of legacy card talk talk going on. And to be fair, I mean, Black Panther has been made a lot and there's a lot of like really cool versions that you could Oh yeah. I mean, my number one pick, I mean, bias pick, where it's the Captain America set one, where instead of like sitting on the throne, he's got his leg oh, up yeah, on the yeah, throne. Yeah. I love I love that version of Black Panther. It's so sick. sweet. I really like the the Ultron set one, the Age of Ultron where Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's like the shadow kind of yeah, behind him. Yeah, he's got the effect going down. He's like coming down on the Uh but also like all the the CAV rare one, the ABPI one, you could do the rookie from Infinity Challenge. Like, I think it's going to be really hard for them to go wrong on which Black Panther they pick because pretty much every time I've seen him, even as a kid when I like didn't know who he was, I was always like, this is just a cool character. It's kind of a beast. So throw oh, him more dude. in the game to get more of his supporting <sighs> cast, which... The really AVX one. Happened. I love the AVX that one. That was a solid that'd one, be, too. That'd yeah. be really cool when you get a legacy. Yeah, there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do. I'm curious to see more vibranium effects. See yeah. what all that jazz is Where's about. Where's all that going? Yeah. Is there going to be more past what we've already seen with like the equipment that you can generate with the <sighs> Shuri, um, who is also which, like which, crazy good. Which Brian kind of commented and confirmed that we can yes. just make her a six yeah. damage. <laughs> we to can just keep on that. loading her. We can, so yeah. Characters who can be equipped with multiple equipment, a.k.a. Elsa Prime, who is already at 30 points, a 12 for two, can get her stats jacked up to the high heavens. By just equipping her with the same equipment over and over. Which so is so awesome. You can bump her damage up to a 5. You can get her defense up to a 20. And then she's already 12. Oh, I mean, Kathana, oh sure. Want, yeah. 13 attack. I like. I don't know. I'm looking at that uncommon. And seriously, after the weeks of like building on and off with various things, support is just so limited that that uncommon is like truly like... It's a TK. It gets you vibranium tokens. It lets you buff your damage without any positioning you just equip king killmonger doesn't exist anymore there's no equipment limiter oh dude that is so true so it's just no longer like, scared to equip this is uh like this seems like a really really solid piece so if that's what an uncommon looks like in the set then yeah i'm i'm eager to see what the higher rarity stuff looks like i know we've seen zeus as well who we have yeah, had an chase. interesting sideline effect and then the energy explosion to the return of deity bases which we knew we've seen those yep. in the renders We've seen some crazy sculpts, so they've got a lot of potential to revisit stuff, and yeah, it's it's going to be cool. I'm excited. I can't wait to play it. I like that it's coming out around like Halloween. Like I know it's not spooky, like this Wheels of Vengeance is like spooky, but I just like doing events around Halloween. It's really fun. And actually, yeah, fun fact, uh, I get Mike. Scared. Mike, yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm, Mike just, I'm just updated scared. our entire month of Hero Clicks events at Dragon's Lair. That, really know. cool, like, Halloween-themed ones. So I really appreciate the work that he's doing to get all those out. It's really awesome. Some more fun stuff here. Zombie George Washington is back. So if you don't want to, you know, uh, you, you had to wait way earlier in the year to finally get him. And now he's finally just coming out. So now he's back, and it's going to be a purchase of $100 or more through October 31st. You can get a Zombie George Washington with your Hero WizKids dot shop.wizkids.com. Are they still Hero doing Clicks the order. gnome promo? I believe well? they are still the doing nomo? the gnome. The nomo. 
It, uh, yeah, just a day ago they said it was extended, so yes. Okay, so you can get a Battle Gnome um, and Also until George the end Washington. of October, so yeah, if you do $50 or more, so 100 bucks, we get you both a Battle Gnome and a George Washington. It's and pretty good. Honestly, we might have to just do a segment on Battle Gnome in this show he here. He is kind of nuts. He's, uh, I think he's like way better than people realize. I've, I've been double, triple taking this guy, and I don't know, like... I, the idea of playing him with Kingpin Prime is awesome. I don't know if that's necessarily the route you go. Also, gnome keyword. That is hilarious. So I don't cute. know. I feel like that's got to be like the podcaster keyword, basically, where it's <laughs> yeah. like, it's cute, but you know. Yeah, probably not going to One's it ever going to, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. It's funny. But the fact that they have like the adjacent friendly characters can use telekinesis as free, but only to choose battle gnome. Like, okay, any that's iteration so good. of placement is usually pretty good, especially when it's not costed. And the fact that this can trigger multiple times, they can do this like to themselves. That seems really good. Traded sidestep is always nice. And then the biggest thing for him is the battle gnome cannot be targeted by larger opposing characters. He is tiny size unless he was given a costed action since your last turn. So you can free TK these guys across the map. They can't be targeted. And then his damage special gives him close combat expert shape change. When he is or when battle gnome uses shape change and succeeds, modifies combat values by plus one. And he can't use Battle Fury until the end of your next turn. Or he can use Battle Fury until the end of your next turn. So this guy's naturally an 11-3. If he hits a shape change, he's a 12-4. But for the most part, he's going to be 11-3. Kingpin Prime can buff him up to a 12-4. You can play this with whatever else. Some you know legacy Daredevils to kind of blockade your team even further. And you can probably get these guys up the map and like start hurting people. So yeah. it, it opens up an interesting strategy where it's like, okay, are you going to be able to target me before I'm just like in your face and beating you to death with these little battle gnomes? So I don't know if this guy is like, I don't think he's like top tier, like, oh my gosh. I think you build around him though pretty easily. He buffs his stats. He's crazy yeah. stuff, dude. Yeah, he's like a solid or... little attacker. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know? He Big actually things, is really small cool. Packages or... Also, past keyword, also mystical keyword. Yeah. Two baller keywords right now. Yeah, but insane movement. What is he? He's three, two, and then four. So he's nine square reach just automatically. I mean, he has an infinite square reach because you can just keep placing your own guys. Oh, yeah, that's also just true. Keep TK yeah, him. you're like, right, actually. Timebreakers can TK this guy. Oh, my gosh. Free. Like, so when you have like placement oh my that's gosh. this free... It's just, it's really wow, hard you're so to push right, over. Dude. So I'm, Holy again, smokes. not going to say he's like, oh, he's going to blow the meta out of the water, but it is something that is like... He's an effective little attacker. That right? effect move is all over the too place. strong to not, like, at least raise your eyebrow at. So Dang, I fully yeah. expect someone like, I don't know, like Michael Nelson to find sure, out some, some crazy yeah. battle gnome shenanigans well, and now then, he's like listening to this and he's like ah oh, well now i have to yeah well michael this is me calling you out make a crazy battle gnome team for us and if you do send it to us we'll talk about it yeah it'd be fun but I, I i really like this figure i think this is the dino hatchling had a similar effect you know until it was a rat and now i don't love it but where it's like oh yeah you can really shape teams around this like battle gnome is almost in a way like an archetype figure where but at the same time like you could just play one of him Again, have crazy reach. I'll oh, carry up whoever. They're free TK. They sidestep. TK again. TK again. And before you know it, there's just a battle gnome in your face. And you just can't it's really do easy. anything about yeah. that. So Actually, that rocks. I really, really like this. He just has sidestep too. Like his reach is yeah, crazy. Yeah, just sidestep charge and then, yeah. The only TK. bummer, you can't equip him because he's tiny. But if you really wanted to, you know, Elsa prime him. Give this guy the trick arrows. Like little stealthy <laughs> assassin dude. Little Nomeo oh. and Juliet action yeah. going on Nomeo here, bro. And Juliet. Yeah, dude. That's that's the trick that we're waiting so to sick. see. Where's Juliet? Actually, facts. Let's get it made. 2008, 2009, cult classic film, mm -hmm. Nomeo and Juliet. Let's get it made. Yeah, I'm waiting for the Jack and Jill iconics from oh my Adam gosh. Sandler. That's, yeah, that's what we're looking for. I like wanted to like that movie because no, I was didn't. like, well, me and Dara are boy girl twins, and I was like, ah, oh, maybe we'll enjoy this movie. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> no, no, we did not. Not at all. Not even close. <laughs> Another figure that got spoiled this week. So shout out the Champion Clicks Open. This kind of got spoiled before this though. The card was floating around of this uh, deceased Black Adam, but it was finally clarified that deceased Black Adam is being debuted at a Champion Clicks Open icy regional near you. So maybe you even say, near us, Calder. Maybe 
Perhaps. Perhaps. I would like to I would like to run another Champion Clicks Open event like how we ran it recently. That'd well, you cool. know, sometime that will probably happen. More details to come. More details to come. But like Omaha that. fans, as cryptic you guys as that are, is. You guys are getting it good. I'll let you know that. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. I mean, we we shell out for our players. Oh, yeah. We, we love our area. I love the players that are here. And I just want to make sure more fun events are happening in Omaha. So, you know, if you ever think, maybe, I, maybe, I, maybe I'll travel to Omaha. Please do. Yeah. It's a great and time. And contact me if you do. I can help you out in also the whole true, lodging uh, department. Hotel type of deal. Uh, they do say this winter you'll have the chance to win this winnable convention exclusive for the first time at a Champion Clicks Open participating regional events. And now we'll be adding more locations across the country than ever before, working hand in hand with our friends at WizKids Hero Clicks to provide you the best experience possible. More information will be unveiling in due time, but January is going to be a lightning tastic month. Ooh, January. Lightning tastic. Ah, quite a word choice yeah, you, <laughs> there. You could say electric. Electric. I would say, yeah, it's going to be an electric <laughs> month. Shocking. That's points against you, David. Sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's a little tough. This well, guy rocks, though. Black Adam's really cool. So he's 75 or 65. Apocalypse, Secret Society Supervillains, Monster Mystical, Pass, Ruler, Warrior. Love these keywords. He has a whole deceased trait. Where when he's KO'd, you move him to his last three clicks on click nine. He takes an unavoidable at the end of your turn. Protective Pulse Wave. We know the deceased trait. He has a special speed power for his first three clicks. So it is going to be the first two of his 75 and his first click of his 65 line. And then on his very last click, click 11 of his deceased line. It's called No Mercy. Charge flurry, but maybe given a range as free instead of one of the attacks. He's got Pulse Wave top dial. He can charge up, pulse wave everybody, hit him, yeah. or hit somebody, pulse wave them. Pretty gnarly. Well, the fact that it's like, oh, you perplexed up your defense, charge pulse wave, it's gone. Yep, and now I'm beating hit. on you. Yeah. Yeah, that, that it's rocks. Really, it's really, really, really good. His special attack power is only available on his deceased clicks, which gives him pulse wave. When Black Adam uses it, hit characters can't heal until your next turn. Very solid. It's also called the anti-life equation wrapped in lightning. Pretty sick. Mm. Just pretty baller. My people do not need compassion is his damage power, which is only available on his 75 point line for those first two clicks. Close combat expert leadership. So yeah, he's a charge flurry. So he's also a 12 for four. Think about that. Close combat expert leadership. When an opposing character attacks, if they could have targeted black Adam, but didn't after resolutions, deal them one penetrating damage protected out with. It's pretty gnarly ability. I like this a lot as compared to the mastermind to me, Black Adam. Mm -hmm. This is a way cooler effect, I think. Just being able to say, oh, you could have targeted me, but you didn't. Boom. Okay, in that regard, yeah. But the trade on that rare one where it's just double mystics and it's Oh, that is is still, I just meant in this, in just specifically this effect. Yeah. I think this is really cool. I think he's a really solid deceased. Like, down dial, he switches to sidestep super strength, which isn't great. But that top dial is is pretty nasty. I really do like the charge. I pulse wave you, then I'm punching He's you. He's pretty similar, I guess, to like the Superman, who he just kind of rolls on a like sidestep RCE or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Down yeah. dial, so they're so kind of similar in that vein. You hit this guy down, and it's like if you don't have a way to heal him up, maybe it's just kind leave of like, him alone. Yeah, just leave Black Adam alone. This is also probably the least like bloody deceased we've seen so far. I suppose Darkseid yeah, didn't have any lot. blood on him, but there's not yeah, really. Yeah, Darkseid didn't have any blood on him. He's like zapping his face. He is. I guess, yeah, he's kind of got a little itch. He's got a little itch on the side of his head, and he's zapping it with some lightning. That'd his face I, his face is bloody, right? That's what it that is. It looks like it, yeah. Enhance. Yeah. Enhance. 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 Yeah, his face is, like, bloody, and he's got all these little tears in his costume and stuff. I just... Black Adam is another character that, admittedly, I don't know a ton about, but I don't really care. I just... I just think he's cool. I mean, the most I know about Black Great Adam costume. is everything I saw in the Black Adam movie with The Rock. That is my only... <laughs> We have to lock him away. Yeah, you're right. You should lock me away five minutes later. We better let you out. Oh, how do we stop this massive threat? I think we need to let him out. <laughs> you didn't let it. Uh, that movie's so bad. No, it's really bad. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, never play anything superhero related again. Stop. Get out of the movies, baby. Those movies specifically. Dang. I mean, yeah, nobody can beat me. That's my rule. And nobody from other properties are allowed to like come and join in because I'm the star. That is That is really lame. You're Black Adam. You literally only exist because, because of Shazam. Shazam. Yeah. That it's actually like is kind of wild. No yin. I'm yang. No yin. Yeah. That's literally that like what he is, did. That really so is what the stay away. Are. Stop casting him. And stop casting Kevin Hart, too. You haven't done it yet. Oh, my don't, gosh. Don't even think about it. Dude, that's so true. And also, They're hey. the same, same acting whatever, style. Whatever animator is animating a movie currently about a character that does a very specific voice, hey, don't hire Chris Pratt. Please don't. <laughs> 
They have a very specific way of talking and a very specific voice. Don't Especially hire a guy. don't do it if they're like an Italian plumber. <laughs> or a cat. Or a cat that you very specifically, you have a voice for Garfield. Oh, Garfield? Yeah. There's a new Garfield movie coming Yeah, there's, oh. it already came out. Chris oh. Pratt was Garfield in it. Really? Yeah, ex- yeah. see? Like, you didn't even know, and it was, yeah. Ew. Why would he be, you know, like, Garfield's like, oh, come on, John. I, I can't really crazy... do it, but you know that like, Garfield talks in like, oh, a lower... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Here's Here's a proposition. Hire voice actors to be voice actors. There you actors. go, yeah. Hey, let's let's think about that. Anyway, Black Adam is very cool. The Champion Clicks Open is very exciting. It's really awesome. The fact that it's kicking off in January, it means we got some time to prep. I know there's States events coming up soon, too. True. But that's 400 silver, so that's a different ball game. Getting back into, I would think, like the 300 modern circuit. Maybe they want to do pulp. Maybe they I sure... Do... I guess I'd be curious to see what pulp looks like post-rotation a few sets in. That could be mm-hmm. kind of fun. Yeah. But I would assume like 300 modern as kind of, again, another primer for their event happening in March. I would think so. I'm I'm hoping for it honestly. I I would like to see the 300 modern circuit get expanded, and in one shape or another, we will have a hand in doing so. Uh, Absolutely. Whether that be with champion clicks, maybe we'll run some of our own events. I don't know yet, but we're planning some stuff. It'll be fun. It'll yeah. be a good time. Yeah. But that's really about it for the news. There's not a ton going on, so we just want to take some time, focus on some post-rotation team building that Ian and I have been doing. I built a, I built a really fun team. I'm Ooh. loving the pass keyword. You Before guys have you get fully brands. into it, oh, okay. I do want to I do want to say uh, one of the listeners of the show reached out, Dustin, and said like, "So is Jefferson like breakable? Is it is it possible to like make his lightning go off?" I was like, "Oh, two steps ahead, man." Oh yeah, we. Yeah, been yeah. doing this since day one. Absolutely, King Je- King Jefferson is disgusting. He rocks. I I love King Jefferson. So like I always loved the super old. I shouldn't say super old. Incredible Hulk General uh, Thunderbolt Ross, who airstrike. You, <laughs> you pushed him, he get airstrike right. And this is basically the same thing. King Jefferson just airstrikes in a different way. So this whole team, I called it the Jefferson Bomb. Uh, it's all about just popping off King Jefferson's call down the lightning ability in just a really fun way. So kind of the main motor functions of the team. I'll just run down all the characters and then we'll kind of break it down. So King Jefferson, first up, Despero, Flash Raptor. We have Pegasus Captain America, Prime Madam Xanadu, Predegaton, Two Gun Kid, and then we have two Time Breakers that we are main forcing. So the whole goal here, again, KO some of our own figures and then bring King Jefferson across the map, call down the lightning. Pretty simple. And we should go over what exactly is the lightning. We should. Yeah, that is true. That is the biggest thing. So he has a trait. It's called, I wasn't prepared for you last time. I'm ready for you now. Power. Once per game, if King Jefferson is occupying an opponent's starting area, choose a square on the map for each character in your KO area. Deal three penetrating damage to opposing characters adjacent to or occupying one or more of those of the chosen squares. So, Depending on how many people have died, how many friendly characters have died, you get to choose a little spot on the map, and then everybody adjacent to that is going to take three penetrating damage, or if they occupy that square, they'll take three penetrating damage. Things to note, King Jefferson is 60 points, so this will deal three penetrating damage to a 50-point Kong. Really cool. Uh, It's not an attack. There's no rolling. There's no nothing. It's just power once per game. Also gets through stop clicks. Yep, it's really huge, really strong ability. Um, Also, you can't, like... Put one point on the map and then another point on the map. Like you can't choose two squares next to each other and have people take six damage. It says one or more of the chosen squares, so there's no doubling yes. down. Nothing crazy is happening here. So the whole idea is we just want to proc this ability like right away, turn two, like as soon as we can. <laughs> like that's what we're that's what we're gunning for. Um, and this is what lets us do that. So we have time breakers. They are our fodder. We have two. We instantly get to make uh, one on the first turn. And then the way we're killing these, since these guys have toughness. We are using Despero. So, Despero has telepathic uh, sub- subjugation, something like that. At the beginning of the game... Oh, sorry, this is wrong. Uh, it's the removing pieces from the table. That's what it is. For all characters with this trait, when another character uses telekinesis, after resolutions, deal one unavoidable damage to any characters they placed. So, we have two other people with telekinesis, Madam Xanadu Prime and Perdegaton. They are going to be TKing our time breakers to kill them. Typically... Like in the games I played, I only need to kill about two to three time breakers to hit everybody that I needed to hit on the map. 
it's like three little points and every adjacent square is pretty dang good for how clustered up some teams are. So it's not too many you have to kill and you do have to, of course, instantly sink in 10 to 15 points to make this happen, but it's sick. So Despero's special TK ability with our own Perdegaton and Madam Xandu TK allows to kill time breakers, which we can just keep generating and just kind of keep killing. How are we getting King Jefferson across the map? I'm glad you asked. We have Flash Raptor, and I also should say we have Cathan on King Jefferson. So Cathan is mostly there for King Jefferson to self-damage himself. So that way Flash can pick him up. So let's read Flash's ability. I've got you, bro. Hypersonic speed. When the Flash Raptor uses it, after resolutions, choose a friendly character that Flash Raptor moved through that took damage since your last turn and place them adjacent to Flash Raptor. Flash Raptor has an 11 speed. Uh, I always turn one if I win that map and go first. I just perplex up his defense or something with Madam Xanadu, move him in front of everybody. He can now mastermind. Um, if I don't have first turn immunity, I can mastermind to time breakers. Or if I do have first turn immunity, I can just mastermind anybody. It doesn't matter. They're not dying. So you can move up Flash. You just want to move him up those two squares just so that way he can actually um, make it all the way to the end of the map without having like perplex speed or anything. So now that Jefferson took damage from Cathan, so your first turn is this. Make a time breaker, TK two time breakers, move flash up, perplex up his defense, move him in front of the team, and then King Jefferson moves up and down. Well, can't you just hold on? With Flash Raptor, you start in square two, yep. you move 11 to 13, you place Jefferson in 14, he sidesteps Oh, yeah, because he can't actually sidestep him to 16. Yeah. Yeah, he does start in square two. Okay, then, yeah. So you don't even have to move him. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty... Oh, no, well, he actually he has to move through Jefferson square... Oh. So he would have. He's wasting one move to go side to the side. He has to move oh, okay, through Jefferson yeah. Square. That's that's the main problem. So you can also TK Jefferson up if you want to. So if you don't want to do the Cathan thing or waste an action on your first turn, you can waste an action on your second turn, which I don't love doing. And you can TK him with like Perdegaton or Madam Xanadu or something, and then he can just take a damage like right away that way as well. If you don't want to okay, put Cathan sure, on King sure. Jefferson, that's like just another way that you can uh, proc him um, and then be able to use him. And then that way he's also forward and then you can move through him forward uh but you are right you can also time breaker him up so if you don't want flash so flash this can still team not has move placement to there's do an insane amount of placement there's not an exact way you can you can probably figure a way out to do it. yeah so i know you're thinking calder those are the main keys what's with all this extra extra stuff so it's passed pass is just strong um defensively the team is okay. <laughs> the team is okay defensively. It's not great. King Jefferson's your kind is not welcome here trait helps us a lot. Gets rid of like flight and super strength. If they're within seven of your starting area, that is huge to not get alphaed. I'm running two coffins and the Black Panther statue. I guess you could run like three coffins or, or something. You know, you could do some form of blocking terrain to kind of keep people away from you. Uh, as long as you choose an outdoor map, Flash Raptor can move through it. So that's totally fine. Captain America is really just like a bouncer for this team. I'm giving Captain America to Bucky's arm, gives him a little bit of survivability. Obviously, he makes him that 12 for 4, so he can cut through a Kong super easily, and he's passed. He's hypersonic speed. He's just a great passed attacker, so I like having Cap. Uh, we have Two Gun Kid. I played Two Gun Kid with the motorcycle. I just kind of tossed it on him. I'm actually moving the motorcycle to Despero because now that Despero has like a running shot double target Pensai or double target like That's mind nice. control, yeah. I like it way more. And I was just kind of wasting points on the motorcycle, anyways. You could also get rid of the motorcycle, have an extra time breaker, give Two Gun Kid the trick arrows. There's a lot you can do. But Two Gun Kid is just also an easy prob of like full speed running shot. He makes the double attacks, precision strike, and extra damage. I really like it. So the team just naturally has a ton of support and a ton of movement. What is it? Perdegaton, Madam Xanadu, Two Gun Kid. We have three probs, and then technically, or actually four with Despero. We have four probability controls on this team. And then technically, anytime anyone makes a ranged attack, they the can also use The stonks prob. continue to climb. Yeah. Oh, because we are true. headed into such very a true. heavy probability control era, it's not yeah. even funny. Every other piece in Masters of Time, which are probably good... Have prop. So yeah. Get that amount. jokester while you still can. Before the jokester's on you. <laughs> That's true. The jokester's on you, mm -hmm. baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Madam Xanadu, I've, I've fallen in love with this piece. I love, number one, she's the cheapest past perplex <laughs> right now. Besides, and she does more, right, versus just perplex. She's a TK perplex, prob, all this. We went into Madam Xanadu Prime. She's insane. I'm not really running tarot. I'm still standing firm on that. I don't think you need it with this team no either. No tarot. Um, but I just like Madam Xanadu a lot. Perdegaton, 
Uh, he's huge. Obviously, he's just like one of the main support pieces. So the fact that this team uses it and utilizes it yeah, is he's really like, okay. good. He's, he's decent. Um, with it, we actually have Captain America, Perdegaton, and King Jefferson's leadership also on this team. So this team has just an insane amount of support powers, good amount of outwit. So yeah, the the turn really just looks like turn one, TK2 timebreakers, kill them, move Jefferson up or down, pass turn, next turn, flash. You can either timebreaker up Jefferson or TK up Jefferson. Flash moves through. You could also kill a number timebreaker. I, I don't want to kill all of them. You can generate and kill another one and at least leave one on the board, I would always say. Um, so now you have three things in your KO area. Flash moves through Jefferson, however you get him up there, a TK, a timebreaker, whatever. Let's say you've used two actions now. He moves. Flash can attack. So he hits somebody, chooses one target, whatever, punches them, or and then afterwards he can quake. It's kind of your choice again. The quake is free, so you can do it after you drop the Jefferson bomb or before. Personally, I like it before, but it just kind of works. However, I mean, you if want you're hitting kings. things on a stop, like if you hit Kong onto a stop click, you have precision strike quake. So it's also, like, I don't care about it. Wor- it works either way. Or yeah. if you hit him first, and it's you your just, choice. Do you deal choice, him maybe. one damage already right away, then you can just Jefferson bomb him through the stop. So it's mm-hmm. totally fine. So Flash moves up, he attacks, he quakes, or he doesn't, and then Jefferson does power action. He drops the bombs on everybody. After that, you have one action left. I usually do, you can either follow it up with Two Gun Kid or start with Two Gun Kid. Kind of depends how far their team has moved up. Kind of depends like what it looks like. But you have plenty of actions. This team is not utilizing all four every single turn. It really uses like three a turn to make this happen on turn two. But every time it has, it was phenomenal. I There's going to be a team building video about it here up on the channel sometime next week, as well as I have some gameplay that I took while I was at Rainbow. And it was just a ton of fun where it's like, oh, really, you're going to do that? I'm like, yep, I'm going to do that. So King Jefferson rocks. I think he's a ton of fun. I love this whole once per game, king me, drop the bombs on everybody effect. I think it's a blast. I love the past keyword. Also, just shout out Despero. I was going to ask, did Despero, did he, did he do some fun stuff? He did do some fun stuff. So I got to stop a Khonshu and stop a Tarret oh. in one game, Ooh, which is just baby. so good. So I really enjoy that. So him just being able to say, hey, that thing on the sideline, uh, it can't use sideline active and it cannot leave the sideline. That is so insanely good. So it's a good like reverse flash counter. It's a good Cathon counter. I actually I really like it for stopping Cathon. I mean, again, this figure, I people are talking about it. It's not like this hidden gem, but I no. don't think people see how good this figure is. Oh, he doesn't have moving attack. Also, oh. he did get me some free damage. Somebody TK somebody up, and I'm like, you know, you're yeah. gonna take an unavoidable, right? They're like, yeah, it's fine. I'm like, okay. This so, is a control. Got me a little piece free damage off. Is is really good. Like globally affects the board. And he affects the board the second he touches it. Yeah. So, you know, I know you're used to your Masters of Evil being 50 points. It's hard to create a new basis for what 50 points is. You have Constantine in the same department who's doing not quite the same, but similar things where he affects the board immediately. Despero is unique in the fact, though, that he says your sideline active is locked up. Stopping a say, Mern from coming in on Butterfly. I did have to play against a John Constantine, and I was like, oh, man, I don't have any of my props. This is so scary. That is a little scary. So now it's like, all right, JLA, choosing Mystics, perplexing up Flash Raptor's attack. I have to hit John Constantine. He's got to die. At least once, mm-hmm. either with the Quake or with the main attack, so that I can Jefferson bomb him and kill him and get him off the board. Because I was like, I can't have John Constantine on this board. Not when I have this much prob. He is a little scary to play against. So those but, limiter yeah. pieces, like global limitation... Do not take with a grain of salt, especially like in these lower point ranges. So Despero, I, I'm just going to flat out say it. I think he's possibly like a top five figure in Masters of Time. No, I agree. I think if you plan on building anything with past, you need Despero, you need Madame Xanadu, you need Predegaton. Mm, I don't and agree Flash. with Xanadu. You don't agree with Xanadu? I love her so much, Reverse dude. Flash. She is so much fun. Um. Sure, but I just love her. You don't I like need, her so you don't much. Need her is what okay. I'm saying. Sure, you don't need her. Then I would say you don't need Reverse Flash either. I, I'm not saying oh, you okay. need her. Oh, okay. I'm just saying that's an option. I like her. I think she's just so yeah, much fun. Also, not saying I hate her by oh, okay. any means. I'm just, I'm just saying you at I don't least, think she's you at a least need. I would say for past Flash Raptor, Despero, Predegaton, hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Depending okay. on well, again, like past is so vast. Uh-huh. Hey, that uh, it's podcast. It's hard right to there. say. Like Despero, I think is very like. It's the reason why I think people aren't seeing him as correctly is because they're putting him in a box of like, oh, this is for specific builds. And I would agree to that. I think that he is more specific. 
But something like Flash Raptor, if you're playing past and he's not on the build, it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. This what guy are you can running fit instead? Anywhere. Predegaton, anywhere. Yeah. Whereas, like, you know, maybe you want your team to be more offensive. So you're like, well, the control aspects that Despero offers aren't exactly what I'm going for. And that might be, you know, a reverse Flash build. True. So it kind of depends on, you know, control or just I'm trying to break faces. Maybe you're trying to do a little of both. Yeah. But either way, like, yeah, it's a it's a really, really scary keyword. Yeah. And but, yeah, you know, maybe Constantine is better than I'm thinking now too. So I'm like, starting you know. I'm starting to really realize he he can really put like the brakes on a lot of teams. So but this is what I'm building post rotation. I've been having so much fun building with Master of Time, building post rotation. I honestly was not having a blast trying to like brainstorm teams or help people practice for worlds. It was just there's so much. And now like every time rotation happens, it's like, oh, we've washed our hands of just so many elements that just mm-hmm. they feel old, right? Like Exos Swords feels old. You it know? is old. The, the last the last set to rotate just always feels so old and it's like I don't really want to pl- pull Disney anything Plus? out of here. Disney Plus, no, I love Disney Plus so much, yeah. though. Oh, I love that set. I'm currently pouring one out for yeah. Scary and Iron Man. Oh, dude, right on my carpet. U.S. Dang. Agent. That's so, I, man, I love U.S. Honestly, Agent being, so much. That, that was one of the saddest things. Like, not even as, like, you know, I'm not a diehard Captain America fan, but I knew Calder wanted to play it. And just sitting down, I was like, okay, what is, like, the best possible thing we can do? And then that figure ended up probably being like the figure I had the absolute most fun with. That was seriously some set. of the most fun I ever had, like playing. It's Hero like Books. I don't that think between you and I, it's like I think we lost maybe one or two games with that team. Which yeah, not I just don't catching people with surprise with yeah. like U.S. Agent was just so much fun. Where it's like, why are you playing that Prime in the Mad Gym Destroyer era? Like you're just wrong. And then they get their face busted, Dude. and it's like, yeah, that's what beating I uh, beating like like one name? turning Legacy Thanos. Thanos? Yeah, one turning <laughs> a Legacy Thanos. Oh, it felt so good. Hitting him for six back to back. Oh yeah, oh. man! Yeah, Killing rocks. a destroyer like it popped in from the sideline <laughs> yeah. and just murdering that, and they're like, "Didn't think you could do that." I was like, "Nobody does. No one does." So yeah, like, <sighs> did man that U.S. agent figure is like, he's gotta such be a one beast. of my favorite figures of all time. It's a shame he came out in the era he did because he really, he really was, was like, a shame. he was that he was guy. So good. He's a twenty-one defense. Yeah, naturally, <laughs> up baby. close, like, all natty. Yeah, the, <laughs> all stealth. natty, no juice. All natty. <laughs> Oh, quite man. literally, he's juiced. But yeah, that's what I'm building. Ian, you want to kind of discuss about like what you're messing around with right now? What you're kind so of team building? I'm going. Um, <clears throat> I'm stealing some, stealing some flame here, bro. Uh, stealing. I have to because I'm just. I'm so I have to. It. I won't go super in depth on this one because I'm sure you'll hear about it on another podcast from the guy Ooh. who actually played it. But one of the Discord listeners, the D Man sent this over and said, Hi, Ian, I thought you would want to see this team Devin Owens played at our local yesterday, as it was a testament to the effectiveness of the shifting focus Batman from Masters of Time. I read that, I was like, well, you would be correct. I did want to hear about this, and I am going to talk about this. And so it was a tournament for a Weapon X Chase retail booster, so that, you know, you would assume people are bringing their A game, that's what D-Man's saying. And he states that all of Devin's games were 20 to 30 minutes, and he went 3-0 and with 900 Dang. points. Dang. And the first three figures on this build, uh, the name of it is Lots of Batman. Uh, it is Batman. It is Batman. It is Batman. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so he starts with two pirates and then the uh, the witch hunter Batman. He's got Captain America, so a little something for you, Calder. Oh, boy. Green Man, who, yeah, I mean, this guy is insane. With Khonshu, who's free because really he's good, a herald. Yeah. The keywords on Green Man, and yeah, just saying no stop clicks for a t- an attack that hits multiple things. Like, good gosh, crazy. Perdegaton, the weasel bystander for some more range damage. You might be able to see where this is going. And then three time breakers. <clears throat> On the sideline, you have three 017 Batman, so three shooty Batman. And then the 101 Detective Batman, the noir one who shuts off powers, as well as the 044, which is the Omega Batman. So the primary objective of this team is to get your Batman in place and you can keep them relatively defensive using the defend, some perplexes, and then the dolphin team ability with some water terrain. And then you just shift over to three shooty Batman and you bump their damage up to like five and they just blast you for like, I don't know, 30 damage. That's it. That's the team. I got like... That shooty Batman really messed me up. The quick draw cowboy Batman and just our fun casual game we were playing. Oh yeah. Imagine three of these dudes going, all right. Just bang, 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 bang. And he's draw. Like a twelve by himself with Dude, Weasley's like, a thirteen. It's high noon. It's pre old <laughs> Batman. <laughs> so I I saw that and I was just like, dude, this is this is so cool. So now Devin has inspired me to work harder to make those Batman work. But I thought 
my initial theory was correct and that playing multiples of these would be the way to do it. I didn't think three. I was thinking more so two. And I was also looking at it more defensively in terms of like multiple detective Batman and saying like, you don't get to use this power or this power. Like no no, no flurry, no nothing. Devin wants to light people up. But Devin was like, I'm shooting people. And he lives in Canada. I know, and you're so, American, and I'm and you American. Were, you were Mister. What if I do a little? No, I was power. trying to take his guns away, and you know, here we. Are. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! No, no, no! Oh, that is hilarious. That's probably the extent of That's how political <laughs> Dial, Dial H will Schlever probably can. ever get. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, it's but hilarious, that team. Though. That team is really cool. As far as things that I'm experimenting with, it's still Flash Raptor. I mean. Guys, the, it's just so easily abusable. The limitless potential of this guy, he, in my opinion, is an errata waiting to happen. How have I never realized Precision Strike Quake? How it's have they never printed it so on somebody sick, I've used dude. before? Like, so, oh my so, gosh, so it's so good. But along the lines of Batman, too, I really like trying to figure out ways to make the Omega Batman more effective. So kind of the issue with him is that when you shift him in, he's probably going to be next to people because you do have a lot of the defensive options. You know, he's more yeah. so a team-oriented character. But he does have that pulse wave that gives out action tokens, and he does have the ability to poison within three mm-hmm. or within range so he can bump it up if you want to. So trying to figure out a way to take advantage of switching into him at the beginning of the turn, getting a pulse wave off that slows the game down, and also dropping a poison, I mean, that's like two... Potentially free damage, close to free damage. I mean, Pulse Wave, you know, you don't get modifiers, so it's a good chance that you'll hit something. But yeah, just a large amount of AoE damage. And then he's a plasticity piece, not exactly something you want to attack. Again, you get seven clicks on these Batman for 60 points, so he's not exactly easy to chew through. He's not hard either, per se, but still, like, very, very formidable. The other piece that has now been on my radar more so... And I haven't found the pieces around it, but I have an idea of what I how I want it to function. Okay. I think the rare Supergirl is legit. Ooh. I really do. Okay. You know, with how many Soul Swords got played in like certain eras when that was legal, yeah. like, there were some teams running like three or four, depending on your Apox, your Genesis, your Arachnites, figures that had stop clicks. And so you pair Supergirl with anything with a stop click... And then Asael had pointed out over on HeroClix USA, playing him with Kal-El to make it so you can't take more than three. So you take three, heal one. That's probably too expensive of a combo. But just really diving into the idea of, like, I can give my entire team soul swords for 70 points. And in addition to that, you get an attacker who sees through everything with hypersonic, with 12 attack. Like, she's not bad on her own either. She goes down pretty easy, but again, she has a stop click. She does also not get true. to heal because it's another friendly character. But still, the Supergirl, I think there's something there. I just don't know what it is. The fact that like you hit my Kong, Kong goes back up one, now you have to go through the stop again. That seems that pretty really reasonable. Good. I again don't have exact figures to pair with her. I haven't gone as far to like build out the full team. She has some decent keywords to work with as well. But the fact that it's like I don't know. I feel like recently we're seeing CUR pieces that are like legitimate considerations. Like Mr. Mind at 30, I think is another piece where it's like, why not? Eight yeah. Range eight range. So much. Two characters out with double. That is target? pretty legit. That's really good. Supernova to get that insane. Uh, <laughs> bonus. To bonus. Theme? Yeah. And then, you know, the new Shuri uncommon that I already like talked about a good amount, but it's really exciting to see like CUR becoming like more level with some of the higher end stuff. Even if it is like in smaller roles or more support roles, like that's fine. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking to break open even more stuff. And then Constantine as well has just been in and out of my team building. Just trying to build a control team is always hard because it's that goes very against my play style. But John Constantine has kind of been my starting point for the non-theme building of the year. Okay. Where that's I want to look for combinations there. You know, looking at just like a full control team, like a pairing I've been considering is uh, Jennifer Kale and Constantine. So it's like you don't get your re-rolls, you don't get modifiers. If you try to do any modification within uh, Constantine, so a.k.a. what people do is perplex down defenses, right? Yeah. To get around instead of perplexing your own stuff up, it's like, well, now I have a chance to say, no, you didn't. So I think that mm. that's a pretty nasty combo for 80. You could also go the mystical route if you do that. You can start throwing on things like Man-Thing, you know, Madison for some more perplex. Uh, again, though, it's like you can start buffing up yourself crazy with things like Jokester, so go that non-theme route. 
Jokester is another piece where it's like, revisit this guy. Triple percent. 100%. Seriously. He's so good. I had an insane amount of fun playing him last week. Oh and that's gosh, just... It's crazy. Gosh, dude. I'm so happy. We're playing... Like, shout out all the events Mike's makes. They're all 400 points. And I'm just like, dude, I'm so happy. Because I want to play just as many just figures. Not on the min-max <laughs> anything. Yeah. But I'm like, dude, getting back into, like, Gotham City and revisiting Notorious. I'm like, there's so much fun that I just... I still did need not to play Black Lantern to play. Green Lantern, dude. Really? Black Lantern, Hal Jordan. Yet. Black Lantern, yeah, come on. Black bro. Lantern, Green Lantern. <laughs> Black Lantern, Green Lantern. Black Lantern, Green Lantern. <laughs> But yeah, dude, it's just there's just so much fun stuff coming up, coming like just checking backlogs and just being like master of time. I want to play ninety percent of this set. Mm -hmm. I have like plans to directly team build or just play that sub team or whatever it is. Revisiting these old sets, I think there's like there really is a sense of renewal with this rotation. Yeah, because I mean seriously, Scott things get new life. Such, things seriously just get new life to there's them. There's so many things that were written off because it's just like, oh well, Scott can do that, and so yeah. many old things you now have to unwind. Like not every team has pulse wave now, so like stat modification again gains value because it's yeah. like you can't just be shut off. Teams will still have pulse wave. Don't get me wrong. You know we talked about a few, but still the fact that it's not just every team has this 25 point guy. Which interesting stat? Not every team actually had white shirt in the top sixty four of uh, of worlds. There was, I want to say, seventy one percent of teams had white shirt. Wow! So that means like more than like one in four people did not have white shirt. Which again, to promote the insanity of that piece, seems low to me. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's crazy that that's low. That is low. Like that's yeah. a low representation. And you know, we saw a few people. I think Adam Friedman in top sixteen didn't have either Porter. Yeah, he didn't. He had Camo Apocalypse, Daredevil. I think Moe. I want to say. Yeah. Either way, sounds right. Revisiting old sets has been a lot of fun. And yeah, Notorious is one. Keep looking back on. Like, okay, there's some stuff here. The yeah. Super Rare Poison Ivy has been a big talking point for a lot of people. Being able to score on terrain is nice. Cheap access to barrier is fun. And then, yeah, some stuff in next phase, too. Like, Man-Thing finally getting a spotlight after somebody won Worlds with him. I know. I feel like he should have been getting... He was already getting played somewhat, but not as much as like, you would think. No. I think, not. like, Super Arcade Bishop, she's going to see a lot more play. Like, I hope so. That figure's cool. Maybe Werewolf by Night. I'm kidding. That's Maybe. specifically for you, Dan. <laughs> Maybe. I know you're listening. Yeah, there you go. Shout out. <laughs> Calling him out. So, he said he'll play it. Ooh, I'm ooh. waiting. He's a big werewolf yeah. by night boy. There's a handful. There's a handful of cool figures. I think you should probably see a lot more play post rotation. There is so much, and doing like a deep dive on that at some point of like, oh yeah, completely forgot about X piece because this thing existed. Yeah, it's just fun, and you know, having like a more limited feel like this. This rotation just feels so much better, especially when we're front loaded with this such is, an exciting set. This has been my favorite rotation since they rotated Nick Fury Agents of Shield. And that was literally like Balls of Fury is gone, glory, glory, hallelujah! I'm so happy. The heavens have opened wide. Like this is the most greatest day of the world. The sun is Seeing shining. Team bases go though. I'll tell you what. Uh, I never, I never had to really play against them. So it felt good. I wasn't in that it era felt that good. much. I'll say that. Okay. Well, then they kind of came back with was, zombies, and that's it was when I this, was like, "All right, peace." It was that. And <laughs> I also, I also felt like, "Wow, the sun is shining. Days are brighter." When Unimind rotated, just yeah, because it was like I was just bored playing against that thing. It was a boring team, so that felt great. Those what? were two awesome rotations. The happiest rotation. Now I'm trying to think. This one was like close. This one was honestly up there. I, I, it, I wasn't quite counting down the days for this one a little bit, but like, yeah, no tarot cards, no Scott Porters. This is a great rotation. Oh yeah. I mean, this is like one of my favorite rotations ever. It, I, I think I agree with you. I'm trying to think back to like when, when would have been like the, oh my gosh, like, thank God this is gone. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It might it might be this, honestly. <laughs> but we lose and again, you know, paint me as the bad guy. I don't care. We lose MOE though. I don't care what people say. It's truly, I truly wild. I love them. Truly wild. I'll always love them. They are they might be my favorite chase theme. I can't help myself. I, I love them so much. I always had a blast playing them. Although it, when I played them in multiples, that was too much. It's a bit of a headache. Mad respect it's a lot to, to the keep track of. Did. That is so wild. I don't know, though. Because, like, a, a lot of the time that I played Hero Clicks, like, growing up, too, like, you know, just going every week, playing with my buddies as much as I could, like, when I was in high school and yeah. a little bit beyond that, too, like, when I was just in my peak of playing, 
we didn't really play modern or silver or anything. It was oh, just sure. kind of like yeah. bring your teams, but everyone was on the same page of what that meant. So it was never really defined as like gold and silver. It's modern. so nice when you so were on the same didn't page, matter just time. being like, yeah, we know we're going to play kind of garbo or we're going to play pretty good or mm-hmm. like whatever. That's that's truly like the best way. And it's so hard to explain that at like a venue level, but when it's with your yeah. buddies, it's like, come on, guys, you know, yeah, tone like, it down, yeah. tone it up, you know. And it's so well, you know, nice to like play. We'd always on the same build level. in front of each other too. Oh, then yeah. So that it's is like huge. I see somebody pull like Nightcrawler out of the box. And oh, like, so it's like that. I'm like, we're doing that. So this is what we're doing. I'm huh? Like, you want to do that? I'd put Black Adam Shazam on the table. I'd be like, we're doing this, huh? It's like, okay, fine. I was like, that's what I thought. <laughs> you know, let's cool it. Let's you cool see it the off. big stick? You pull out your own stick. It's like, yeah, maybe we put the well, sticks away. All right, maybe let's, yeah. <laughs> But great, great, great time, guys. If you are team building with anything or have any like fun ideas you want to shoot Ian or myself for the Dial H play page, please do. I'm I'm loving team building in this era. So shoot any team build idea that you have with us. Or, you know, if you're ever looking for a roll twenty game, this is pretty actually hard for me to like guarantee. But every once in a while, especially if you're like a Patreon member on our Discord, I'll probably join somebody for a roll twenty game. Or there's a lot of people on there that could join you for a roll twenty game if you want to do some team building, some team testing. Speaking of Baby. the Discord, thank you guys so much to everybody that supports us. We're going to move into the part of the show where we answer a handful of listener questions. These are coming from the Discord. If you want to be a Patreon member, go to patreon.com slash dial H podcast. Join for as little as $5 a month. You can actually join for less than that, but you just won't get access to the Patreon. So if you just want to support us and not even worry about it, you can throw a buck or two our way. Totally cool. But for those that support us $5 and above, I just got all of our token designs made from Luke for a massive time. So I'm going to get those ordered here soon. And all of the past few months, patron rewards are going to be getting shipped out, which is really cool. So now is a great time to join the Patreon, $5 and above. But also, we just got to talk to everybody. We have a great Discord community. We have just seriously a ton of fun. Have everybody like joining random Discord calls, playing some games, whatever it is. Just good discussion. We've got a great Discord. I love our community. And here's some questions from them. So, SuperCab007 asks, with Batman getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, what would that look like as a click? What other superhero would you want to see on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? I mean, it'd be a really cool base, like the yeah, you know, the little the star, like cement. Yeah, um, I I didn't know that that happened, but that's cool. Oh, really? You didn't see that? No. Oh, I even I saw it on like my Facebook feed. It was like Batman's getting a star, which is I don't know. I don't really get it. Why a fictional I don't person, either. a fictional character, is getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? I don't I know mean, if there I'll are other. It. I don't know if there are other fictional. Maybe characters if you that make enough it. money, you get. Yeah. That actually is it. I, I think you actually do have to pay for your own star. Like I think that's actually Batman how it works. Pays? Well, DC pay. <laughs> we just got a call um, from Batman. He I said feel he like his star here. I, I feel like yeah, the only other superhero that could probably get a star would be like yeah, Marvel's Monkey biggest. So, yeah, Monkey Joe. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's probably Spider Man would probably be the other hero that could. You know. Feasibly get a star on the Hollywood Walk. This of opens fame. up a scary, a scary. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think, like this. Very I actually. Much. Yeah, I really don't like it. I don't think you should just be able to buy. I Adam like West has of, his. Yeah. Probably if he doesn't, I'd assume I'm, he does. I'm going to assume he does. Does Christian Bale have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Probably not. Probably not. Oh, I feel like you got to be older to get. Well, I don't, I don't know. know. He's, He's older, like I guess. Forty, fifty. He could have a star. We're not going to look because there's up. like some younger people that have stars. Like a lot of like all the Avengers have a star on the Walk of Fame. And, you know when they did, oh, they really? were like 30s or something. Yeah. Oh. Like Captain America, Iron Man, like you know, like whatever. Yeah, give Chris it to, Evans. Give and, it to the actors who made the characters yeah, iconic give it to the actors, rather than the yeah. characters. Like the people behind it. Yeah. Uh, give it to Bob. Who's Kane. the good one? Okay. Yeah, I was about to say. I don't remember who we like Bill and who we Finger. hate. Okay. No, I mean, well. I don't know. I think there's there's a lot more to that. Like the guy, yeah, he like stole some ideas, and you know, there's a great documentary you can watch on it. Bill Finger is the guy that was screwed over. Okay, was screwed over. So Bob Bill Kane Finger is then. the guy okay. who took all the credit for years. Gotcha. Um, which yeah is is very rough. Yeah. You should not do that. No, it's not very chill. Not very not chill cool of at him at all. No. And then yeah, well, we're not changing to this vibe. We're not doing this. Yeah, let's not do it. Yeah, but yeah, but shout out to Bill Finger. It is, Bob yeah. Kane is the is the evil one. <laughs> Uh, and then Captain Awesome asks us a question. And you may have to pseudo prepare for this. As Master of Time release, as of the Masters of Time release, for each host, what are your top ten primes of all time? Ooh! So I went through. I looked back through, and I, forth. I, I yeah, we can go back and forth. This is in no particular order. Yeah, for the no, most part, no order for sure. It's in no order. So yeah, we can just do back and forth. I'll start off. Uh, Madam Xanadu, after playing again three games, 
currently she's up there for me. I love her. I really like her, especially after looking at like all the primes of all time. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll put Madam Xanadu up here. Ian. Oh, dude, let's go back to the first set with Primes, Ooh. the Batman set. Oh, that makes sense. The super rare Caped Crusader, who that was makes sense. instantly banned in my home games. That's funny. Because he could punch you and then switch places with a bat, and they're just like, this is BS. And I'm like, that's fair. <laughs> it's fair so for me. <laughs> like, Oh, man, so just juicing him up. I won a lot of tournaments with him, too. He was seriously a blast to play with the utility belt. Just bashing people like 15 for six. Just like okay. Hurting that people. That is pretty sick. Yeah, dude, he rocked. My number, I guess, nine is going to be Elsa Bloodstone. I love her. She's just so much fun. I like it. I like the moving equipment around. I love free attacks. Everybody knows me. I love free attacks after being carried. I think she's solid. I think she's great. I think Dark Flash from the Flash set was Ooh, another one that I had a lot okay. of fun with. Big movement, big damage. And, yeah, just one of the ones that I pulled like right away in that set. So I played him a good amount. He's a lot of fun. Good, solid nice. number nine, again, in no particular order. <laughs> no particular order, because this guy is probably, like, my number one, but U.S. Agent, we talked about him earlier in the show. Absolutely love this piece. It is one of the most, like, accurate, to, like, like movie or yes, TV show accurate figures they've ever made. He is also just an insane, like, blast to play. So, Prime U.S. Agent from Disney Plus is my eight spot, but again, he's really, like, my number one. Yeah, this one is easily a top three for me, but I'll mention it at number eight as I'm like scrolling through these. Alyosha Craven. Ooh, the Spider-Man that is set. such a good one. Had I played him more, I would have put him on the list, but dude, I do like him. Oh my gosh, dude. The amount of stuff you could do with this guy was insane. He was all just also just a bystander generator and good on his own. Like it was everything that I wanted to yeah. do in Hero Clicks. And there were so many funny animals that you could just like do the goofiest stuff with. So I, I cooked up a ton of tactics with him. I I'd play him hard occasionally, but a lot of the time it was just to like position annoying stuff like yeah. squirrel girls, like <laughs> a little monkey Joe Paul, yeah, yeah, dumb yeah. stuff like that. Now, Alyosha Craven, he's kind of got like a legacy to him. He can honestly get you a legacy. You could still card. play him in Golden Age. He's yeah, that he's good. Legit. He, is he legit. lets you move fully. <laughs> yeah, he can make Flash Raptor move eleven Ugh. for free. He Ugh. rocks. He's, that is he's pretty so nice. fun. Uh, my seventh spot is going to go to War of the Realms Wrecker. I love Wrecker Prime. Uh, really, that year between Disney Plus and War of the Realms just was a great year for Primes. But Wrecker was a ton of fun. I loved Mission Points when they were a thing. So he was both a Mission Point piece, which is really cool. I love Bystanders. Bystanders just one of the coolest mechanics in the game. He makes three of them, uh, and they're all really solid and really fun. And then also he makes them as free, so he can generate them after being carried. And again, I love drop ship tech teams where you just move a bunch of people up, and they can do a bunch of free things after being carried. And he allows for that. So he had Bystanders, you know, free attacks, all this fun stuff. So I, I absolutely just love Wrecker Prime. He was a ton of fun to play. He was had so many different avenues for team building. He was just an absolute blast. So Wrecker Prime. Yeah, I'll I'll just agree with you on that one. I'll get a new one here, but okay. Wrecker Prime really he's was on your list. Just yeah, so sick. Absolutely nice. So dope. Now, another throwback to just shenanigans. The Anarchy Prime who got to put bombs on the map. He is so solid. I had such a blast with him. He was seriously so much fun. Oh my gosh, you could do like so many stupid things with him and it was like one of the mechanics like they had tried before in a lot of iterations to make things where it's like punish your opponent for moving or positioning but it always put too much onus on your opponent to like i am going to go screw up now anarchy gave you some initiative on that oh initiative. insane board control i love anarchy. so so fun Next up for me, I've got Ultron Pym. He was just like instantly, as soon as he okay, came yeah, out. That's like probably number two for me, dude. Yeah, yeah that's he, pretty I fair. played him into the dirt. Yeah. Ultron Pym just rocks. He's like somehow so simple, and yet he does so many things all over the place. Again, a mission point piece. I've only played like a handful of mission point like teams with Ultron Pym. That was definitely like a super fun way to play him. But just playing the main force or giving him some movement yeah. attack with the surfboard or whatever, he was just a beast at the 80 point cost. You were like, no way. How is this dude 80 points? Ultron Pym just rocks. I really love him. Yeah, no question about that. I, yeah, I, I mean, I played the team I had always played with him was Ultron Pym, regular Ultron. Flash, Flash, Teen Lantern. Yeah. And then... No, you played that bad boy. Oh, yeah, I think I played that. Nasty, <laughs> nasty. Just zip across the board straight yeah. into their starting mission area. Point. It's like, I'm going to make so many drones, and we're either going to, like, slug it out, or I'm going to win by mission points. And so yeah. I just... I played that team, I don't know, like 30 times, dude. I love that team. 
Another one for me, man. This is no surprise at all. The Green Lantern Batman, specifically at 100 points, by the of way. Course. I want to blast people for like six damage. I don't want to just be laying smoke cloud. Like, that's nice and all, but I'm going to lock you down and then I'm going to shoot you. And that guy, yeah, he, he was great at that. So I really enjoyed playing that piece, especially on like detective themes. When Batman Team Up first came out, Luke and I had sat down and played like six matches. And I was just cleaning his clock match after match after match with Green Lantern Batman. It was a ton of fun. Nice. Uh, next up for me is Josiah X from the Captain America set. Just absolutely love that he gives out a global friendly characters that share a keyword can reduce penetrating damage or adjacent friendlies can also and reduce penetrating you. damage. Um, sure, that happens, but he was just so much fun to play <laughs> on a soldier theme team. Soldier's one of my all-time favorite keywords. Josiah X obviously is in that like Isaiah Bradley kind of Captain America costume, which again is just very patriotic. I love seeing that kind of stuff on the table. And then making everybody's impervious, oh, it reduces pen. So I, I can impervious out of pen damage. Was so sick. So I love playing him. I played him a lot with like the Super Scroll from the Fantastic Four set when they would all choose impervious. Now they reduce pen. was so good. Add a lot of life to him. I love Josiah X. He was just a ton of fun to build with. Yeah. In a similar light, what is number five? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So this, so this six. was six, so it's five, well, five for you because I started. Oh, okay. Five for me. Yeah, in a similar light, Iron Spider. Uh, what a oh, fun, sure. What a fun prime to build with. Oh, the amount of stuff that, I mean, even still, it's like, you know, usually when rotation happens, you kind of like start to chunk out like, oh, this is no longer a thing. This isn't something you can build with anymore. You know, if I'm building for modern. But one thing that I'm always thinking about whenever you see like a zero attack is, but Iron Spider can but make Iron it But Iron Spider. 11. It's like, oh, it can't be modified. But Iron Spider can replace it with an 11. Yeah. Or a 12 if I have a 12. You know, like, he's just such a fun engine for building. So Iron Spider is something that, you know, anytime you play outside of the modern format now, keep him in mind. You can do so many cool things with him. So, yeah, he's definitely up there for me. And actually, I, I need to just, I'll make Iron Spider my next one, too. I totally forgot, but when I was, like, scrolling through all the primes, totally forgot about Iron Spider. Oh, my gosh. he was He's so sick. He's so much fun. Playing that team, like, Ian and I, really, Ian, brainstorming, getting that team <laughs> built. Well, I saw a Facebook post about it. I was like, Becoming no a believer. Way. Ah, dude, just so much Broken. fun. Again, like... <laughs> Yeah, drop ship tech or just like turning off the effective equipment was so huge and so many. Oh man, mm-hmm. he was, and he just he had normal beast. leadership. Man, when that hit, and it was like, yeah, no equipment. Mm-hmm. Way cooler, so sick. Like, yeah, Iron Spider just rocks. Man, another one. The Battle World. You're welcome, Calder. Thank Got you. Got it right. Thank you. Battle World Prime Thanos was someone that, like, especially in home games when you're playing like bigger points, no time limit, things are dying. Every time something died, he would get to modify one of his stats by plus two. And uh, that was just a yeah, blast. Because eventually rocks. Thanos is just like god mode, just blasting. And I know a few people tried to like make it work competitively. It was never quite there because typically giving up points is not optimal. Pretty bad. Pretty tough. Never phased me. I still wanted to play him. He was, yeah, he was so cool. Coming in at, I guess, four for me, but really this guy's probably like top three. It is Scourge from the Mighty Thor. I love Scourge. He's a great character. You know, he's just so much fun. In the Thor movies, I was like really, really, really anxiously awaiting to see how well he would like work as a character in Thor Ragnarok. I'm like, you know, Scourge is like kind of just a goon for most of his life, kind of like Enchantress's just kind of muscle. But when he does the whole last stand thing, it's just so cool to see that in comics when he's just holding like back all the forces of hell and it's so sick. And then that this is like the perfect representation of it. Besides, like, sculpt, I did have somebody make a custom sculpt of, like, the movie version with Des and Troy with, like, the dual M16s, which is so sick. So, like, with that custom sculpt, like, push this push this guy over. But I played this guy competitively for a lot when I didn't really understand how to build competitively. But he was still so much fun to play. So you just you put down that last laugh marker. He stands his ground. He's not moving. And he's got, you know, these plus two to his defense. He gets to only take one damage at a time. And he's, you know, got RCE, CCE. And he's just he's just standing his ground. And I just love a figure like this where he just, you know, I don't know, he's just sick. He's just very thematic. He's really fun to play. I built a ton of teams around him. I absolutely love this Scourge Prime. He's seriously one of my favorite primes. He's just he's just so fun. I just love him, man. Yeah, I feel dumb. Oh, so we've got I've got four left? Yeah, four left. Okay. You have four left. Okay. Well, let's talk about some more recent ones then. Gotta give a shout out to our boy Camo. 
I mean, come on. The guy is... He's everything you want. Wow, I can't believe I didn't put him on the list. That's actually kind of messed up. Camo is a... Yeah, he's just a beast. He generates bystanders, which... Yeah, favorite mechanic in the game, easily. He yeah. mobilizes them, which... Always fun. There's plenty of opportunity to do cool stuff with him. He's hyper-mobile, hard to take down. Bites so hard. I mean, he's just he exactly he bites what I hard. want. He he's rocks. got unique effects, but he's also just like, I can just clap. Just bang. No. So, yeah, Camo rocks. Next up, kind of a funky prime, but I really like WizKid from Deadpool and the X-Force. WizKid was just basically Weasel, but in a modern day. Yeah. <laughs> so, And now we actually just have Weasel, now for like 10 points, which is hilarious. But getting this guy for 25 points, where adjacent friendly characters modify attack, range, and damage values by plus one. It was literally just that simple, and I loved playing him so much, because again, he was a damage mod for everything, close range, attack mod for everything, range mod, like, it just rocked. So, super simple. WizKid was just a great prime. I put him on a ton of teams. He's on my state's winning team, my, like, double Captain America drop-off. Like, I I love WizKid. He's he's a blast to play. Oh, yeah. Another recent pick for me, uh, Kingpin. You guys know this. Oh, yeah. I yeah, love Kingpin. really enjoy playing Kingpin. This is uh, an archetype builder. This is something that empowers the small guy, and I love playing swarm teams. I love just playing a bunch of little dudes, you know, and this is a way to make that more effective. So while Kingpin isn't, like, necessarily, like, my favorite at all character-wise, like, I don't. Kingpin's whatever. He's no. cool in the live-action stuff. Vanessa. Never... <laughs> I made an omelet, and I put on my cufflinks <laughs> for the 80th day in the row. Vanessa. He one-shot my Flash Raptor. <laughs> Even for that. The Devil of Hell's Kitchen yeah, sniped baby. my conchu on eBay. <laughs> that was mine. It belonged to me. <laughs> and then he gets locked away forever. And then, yeah. And that's how <laughs> that's the story it. ends. But Kingpin Prime, I don't, I don't need to say anything more about him. He, he rocks. He's dope. And then my last pick, again, this is not my number one, but it's Reverse Flash. I really do think Wait, he's last just... last pick? I thought I had two more. This is my final one. Oh, this is your final one? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm, I'm out. Two I, did, my last I did 10. This is my last I'm one, doing 11. at least. Okay, you can do 11. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, but yeah, Reverse Flash. He's a ton of fun to play. I really like him. Past, again, past keyword. I'm loving it. The fact that it's every bad thing. It was me, Barry. Like, That's cool. The meme comes to my mind before the real line. But Duh. it's still funny. You know, it's just hilarious. Yeah. And then, yeah, like hypersonic speed, flurry, for, like that's insane. That rocks. Like he's just a fun piece. He's just awesome. I love reverse flash. Okay. Well, 10 and 11 then. Sorry. I thought I had one more, guys. Kind of got lost in the Probably sauce. Probably wouldn't there. have mentioned someone, but I don't know who would have been. Uh, JLU Micron. This dude <sighs> went Man. so hard. Oh, my gosh. The empower enhancement I can't I CCE. Him. He can attack after placement, he can change sizes. This dude was just so much fun, great sculpt, and seriously, somebody that it just didn't even matter. I would try to fit him on, like, everything for a hot minute. Oh, my gosh. I loved playing this figure. I loved building with him, pairing him with the super rare Adam, doing some wild stuff. Seeing Joe Alves, like, just absolutely break this figure was so cool. And that's what, like, really got me on the train with it. And so, He's Mike, again, a drop, drop ship tech piece. Like, he rocks. Yeah. Playing him with Jason Wingard was really <sighs> fun. That was fun. And then the last one that, oh my goodness, I thought for sure this guy would be on your list, but Punisher War Machine, dude. I never played him that much. I was actually about to pull him up oh, as an man. honorable mention, but I really never played Punisher War Machine all that much, actually. Dude, he was he's so sick, though. Fun. No, he's awesome. Back in, so, I can't remember how it had happened, uh, like, when he was going for crazy amounts of money. Like, at one point, he was, like, $250. He had been just winning so many tournaments. He's like, okay, expensive. well, I better pick this piece up. So, I got him a little bit before he went up. And at the same time, I had also made a trade. <laughs> so I had two, and so Luke and I would play That's against each other, awesome. both with Punisher, Punisher War Machine, Machine, and it would just be like, all right, who's getting lit That's up first? so much fun. That rocks. But playing him with the power gem and just doing like six, six, just, it felt so good. And then when, you know, there are some haters out there. Let me make oh, it yeah. apparent. There's some haters out there. There always who are. Who said, why would I ever play Punisher War Machine in silver when I can just play blah, 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 blah. And then somebody won an event with Punisher War Machine. Oh. With a Power Gem equipped. They're balling. Balling like that. They went and balled out. So, yeah. Six sculpt. Crazy history. Uh, You know, the Bonnie and Clyde, like him in 76. Yeah. They went Ran tables for four months. Good gosh. That was like right before everything had shut down. But, yeah, that Prime has a history. (sighs) It's a great variant of the character. And, I mean, War Machine and Punisher are just always characters I enjoy seeing. Yeah. 
Oh, this is like pinnacle chef's kiss, like prime, really mm -hmm. like as fun alternate, like go? an alternate paint yeah. job. Like if a prime is just purely going to be an alternate paint job, then holy smokes, this is like an amazing way to it's do exactly it. Exactly what you want. So yeah, this nah, figure was rocks. so cool that I ended up reading like the storyline that this came from. I've still never read the Punisher War Machine. I assume it's like it's it's like a Michael Bay comic. Probably exactly it's a what lot you fun. think. Punisher goes, I need an armor. I'm gonna blow some people up. Well, it's like, all right, Frank, we're gonna give you the War Machine armor to do this mission. He's like, okay, and then he immediately stops listening. Then he's like, I'm gonna oh, go do what I want. That and it's just about right for boom, 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 bang, 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 boom, 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 boom. Frank, stop doing that. Nah, bang, bang, nah. bang, bang. <laughs> I'm good. It's a sick story it's also i think it's only like six or seven issues oh then yeah it's, it's worth, worth reading. reading it's really yeah. cool and they're like oh he got the punisher war machine or the war machine armor like, yeah armor. yeah he did <laughs> why'd you give him that <laughs> we thought, we thought he'd listen to the orders for some <laughs> reason it's just the punisher it's he's kind you know, of what it is <laughs> oh he's always been a team player <laughs> <laughs> this guy just doesn't know who the punisher is at along all. with everybody yeah right? he's good friends uh, but yeah, I think you again, Eli, for that awesome question, or Captain Awesome, thank you for that awesome question. That was really fun to do. But if you guys, again, want to ask us any questions, you can do so by joining the Patreon. Not going to plug it again. But if you don't want to join the Patreon and you just want to message us, you can do so by going to Dial H for Hero Clicks podcast on Facebook, messaging us any questions there, or emailing us at Dial H for Hero Clicks at gmail.com. We love getting emails from listeners. You know, just you don't even have to ask us questions. If you want to tell us, hey, this is a favorite video of mine or whatever, you can do or statements. X, Y, and Z, you can just do a few statements. Statements. We love seeing statements. They're great. They're Give fun. Give us your hot takes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that too, actually. But Honestly, yeah. Throw in some hot takes. We'll talk about them. That is everything for this episode. Ian, do you have any shout-outs? This time around? I have one shout-out that I think you'll agree with. Okay. So, shout-out. I'll actually make this guy Player of the Week as well. Might as well oh, on the wow, shout-outs. Okay. But Alec Musser for having the amazing idea to get Ian, myself, and Asael all on a podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. And do this great... Um, you know, it's what our group chat name is, but the dial A for Alpha Strike USA, I believe it's something like something, something, like, something that. like that. Too long. So we did this great podcast. It was Alex's idea to get Asael from the Alpha Strike, us from Dial H, and himself, of course, from Heroclix USA to do this podcast. And it was just so much fun. It just flowed very naturally. We had a really fun conversation. We, we kind of went all over the place, and it was just great to kind of be a guest on a podcast and like I don't have to worry about steering the ship I can just kind of have fun yeah, and do whatever out. and we're just yeah. hanging out with our boys and no just, plan for and the just show just kind of talking yeah just seeing where it went and talking I think it's a great here. I think it's a great podcast I'll link the YouTube video down in the podcast description here for you guys but if you're a fan of Dial H if you're a fan of any of those other channels uh, please listen to the show it's so much fun I do have a shout out actually I want to shout out Mr. Ryan Redman over at Degeneration right. Clicks and the whole crew at Degeneration Clicks for all the effort that they put into their channel I ended up speaking with Ryan for I don't even know how long we were talking for a hot minute just about everything Hero Clicks but he's expressed a lot of interest in moving to Generation Clicks forward and just making it more than what it is right now. And I'm just really excited to see all that he does. He's going to get into like the video space. You know, they're already doing like insane amounts of podcasts. Their most recent one is four hours where they do a deep dive on like everything. Insane. So I'm like halfway through it at this point. But uh, yeah, shout out to Ryan. I think he's going to do some awesome stuff. So I also think you guys should give Degeneration Clicks a follow on Facebook. Subscribe to their YouTube. And then always listen to their show if you want to hear about anything, especially like casually, competitively. They all can hold their own, but they also just enjoy playing the game in unique ways. So shout out to all those guys. Dan, Miles, Pete, Ryan, I guess. You're all right. Yeah, he's your okay. Oliver, you're Christine. okay, I guess. I don't know if they're they're degeneration clicks. They're just not I'm on the show. I was about to say they are. Yeah, <laughs> they rep the merch. Gosh, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody though. To Dan and Pete, right? Oh, okay. Dan, right. Pete, Miles, Ryan, Christine, Oliver. I hope, I hope it's everybody. Because I don't All right, know if there's anyone else. else I, I feel apologize. bad. Nah, I feel bad if there is, but I think that's everybody. I think that's everybody. All right, cool. <laughs> well, guys, for all your Hero Clicks videos, podcasts, unboxings, and more, make sure you dial H. And like always, happy trails. Meow. He's on there's a cap, your there's a cap, a Captain America. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on there's your left. There's a shield, left. there's a shield, and it's on your left. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on your when left. When he's on your left, he's on your left. He's Captain America on your left.